Hello and welcome to another video. Today what I wanted to do is go over continuum subtraction. Um, you may know I've been messing around with this a bit uh, for the past few weeks if you follow me on Instagram. Um, but basically continuum subtraction attempts to remove things that aren't um, emission nebulae from your narrowband data. So for example, um, I've shot HA data. Um, but it's a 10 nanometer filter, so we have a lot more uh, bandwidth than we may need. Um, this counts for all filters, by the way, even 3 nanometers or, or, or even thinner. Um, you're always going to capture things that aren't the emission nebulae. So what we want to do is take our red channel and subtract it from the HA. Um, this leaves us with only the emission nebulae. Um, I've copied the technique from uh, this website, uh, you can, I'll leave it in the description. Um, it goes into great detail on how it works and um, how to do it inside of PixInsight. Because this expression that is uh, described here doesn't copy over perfectly into Cyril. There's a slight adjustment we need to do and that's what I wanted to go over in this video. So I've opened up Cyril here with uh, a sequence, a HA LRGB sequence, so the HA image, luminance, R, G, and B. Um, but you could also do this with one shot color um, and HA, and even with just RGB or LRGB, um, different setups work. Um, I've already done it with. HA one shot color, so my QSY, QSI 583WSG shot the HA and last year I took one shot color data with my 450D um, and I combined those and it worked perfectly fine. Um, so what we're going to do is we have a sequence, you want the, the images to be aligned, you need the images cropped. Uh, at least I would suggest cropped into a certain way um, so you don't have to do that later. Um, you need the images background extracted um, because you need, do need a flat background for this. Um, and what, I, what you can do is remove the stars um, but I like to do it afterwards because um, I like to do a photometric color calibration. So let's begin. I'm going to close the uh, frame list and I'm going to go into image processing. Pixel math, click the plus here, and we're going to uh, select all the images and add them. Um, if you're lucky, uh, Cyril will give them the variable names automatically, but you can also double click and give it whatever name you want. Um, so, the expression is as follows. We're going to go into HA, then minus Q times... And Q we're going to specify later, um, we first need to, I first like to just make the expression. Uh, open brackets, R minus median, and median is something that's new in Cyril, um, in Cyril 1.2. We couldn't do this previously, otherwise I would have made a video of it, about it earlier. So, median R, uh, dull brackets to close, now going to the parameters. And now this is a value you need to play with. This is different for setups, for filters, uh, whatever. Um, but I find something like this works fine. Yeah, that's pretty good. As you can see, we're only selecting the nebulae. Um, what you're looking for is that it isn't like looking completely black like this, but it should also not be still very white. You need to find a balance in between, basically. Play around with these values. Um, you want to make sure the galaxy core isn't black and neither should it be slightly brighter. So it's just figuring out these values as you go. Something like this looks pretty good. We have a slight black point but it's pretty um, equal or uh, pretty um, flat um, and we're only um, we only have the uh, HA regions uh, popping out. So click close, going to save, and I like to call this HAC because it's a clean HA image. Click save, 
So now that we have a HAC image uh, saved, we can go back into image processing, pixel math plus, and then do HAC. Um, I like to rename the variable from mix to HAC, so I don't feel like typing mixed all the time. Um, now uncheck use single RGB slash K expression RGB. Oh, messed it up here. So and then plus Q times open brackets HAC minus median HAC close the brackets. And then I would like to copy and then paste. And then do this one times 0.2. Now we need to specify Q. Um, in your case, it'll probably still be like something like 0.1 or 0.4, whatever value you find to get HA, the clean HA image. But for adding it, it needs to be quite a lot higher. Um, my findings are something like 4 or 5 works pretty nicely. Don't overdo it. Um, I've overdone it in my previous image, I think, the M106, um, I'll put it on the screen right now. Um, and as you can see, the colors just don't look right of the galaxy. This can be prevented by going a little bit lower on the value, so something like Q equals 3 or Q equals 4, something like that. So I'm going to go 4 right now for this image, close, image processing, color calibration, color calibration. Let's do a quick one just to see what it gives us. As you can see, the HA is quite quite a nice color. It's not too much. The galaxy still has its original color, um, but of course, if you want more more of these HA regions, uh, you can add more or less um, till you find a value that works for you. Now we now have our RGB, but now we still need to do our luminance. So I'm just going to click save on this one. Uh, don't worry about the name, it's it's whatever you want to call it. I like to call it HARGB because it's quite self-explanatory. Now, for the luminance, we're going to click use single K expression. Use single RGB dash K expression. Change the R here to the L. And often you'll find that you can use a smaller value for this one compared to the RGB. So let's say Q equals 3, that looks pretty nice, close, save, HAL, place, save, and now you have a luminance and a HARGB, and now you can combine these in any way you like, personally I like to do it inside of Photoshop with the luminosity blending mode, I think it should be in GIMP as well. Um, that's it for this video, I hope you found it useful. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Clear skies.